Hello and welcome to another video from My Random Hobbies and today, as the title suggests, we're going to be looking at what the best job or the easiest job might be for a HGV or LGV driver. Let's get into it. Before we start, there's a little disclaimer here. I have not had or done all of these jobs that we're going to discuss. What I have done is obviously read about them, uh, heard people discussing them, been um, operations manager for people who are going on these types of runs, and some of them obviously I have done myself. So um, it's built from a range of sources and it is just... Um, it's not factual, it's, it's just opinions here, and of course I'm sure some of you will comment and tell me what you think uh, the easiest jobs, or the hardest jobs even, in haulage are. Now, before we get into it too much, I did say in the intro, HGV or LGV, the, the terms are relatively interchangeable, LGV um, is is a newer sort of abbreviation, if you like, for, for basically the same thing as a HGV. It, I don't know why they've changed the terminology, but they have. But there are different jobs that you can do. And a lot of people out there um, go into the industry thinking they're gonna become a class one driver, class two driver, uh, get a job and you know just drive around the country, go home, get paid. There's such a huge difference between the types of jobs that you can get. Um, and, and if you watch any other people's YouTube channels, you'll see p different people delivering all sorts of different uh, products on different styles of truck. Um, now, the sort of main styles, if you like, are skelly uh, vehicles. So a skeleton, a skeleton, skeleton, not skeleton, skeleton uh, trailer is the ones that you see um, carrying the great big cargo containers on the back. And they're designed specifically to have the containers dropped onto them and then locked into place using what we call twist locks. So they, they physically lock the container down onto the skeleton trailer. Then you've got uh, your box style trailers um, with doors at the back and they can be either We'll call ambient trailers where they are just a box um, and you load stuff on or uh, fridge trailers where they've got a fridge unit attached um, with its own fuel and that cools the goods inside the trailer keeps them at a, a cooler temperature or frozen temperature then you've got what we call curtain siders and you'll see lots of those out and about on the road um, where they've got the little straps all the way down the side um, and those curtains fold out, uh, fold back uh, from the side of the body so you can get load things onto the side. Often they have doors as well at the back so you can do a combination of either or. Um, and then you've got what we call flat beds. So you'll see those again carrying goods um, around and about maybe bags of uh, gravel or um, metal goods. Uh, and again, they're just sort of loaders directly on top and then usually some sort of strapping or chaining going over the top to secure the load. Uh, and then you've got other ones, variations, um, certainly when you go down to the smaller uh, HGV type with, with the sort of, not a box, but uh, they've got little sides on as well um, to sort of, keep the loads in and then and then you've got the tipper uh, type of trucks where they've got a hydraulic ram and and they get filled with stuff and then off they go then you've got the tankers that carry fuel perhaps or maybe milk or other uh, process you know some sort of food goods or whatever where the powders and stuff um, inside and I'm just trying to think if there are any other types yeah, you've got the, the lorries that carry skips and things like that as well. So there's a whole variety of trucks, um, body styles for trailers uh, as well. This leads to a variety of jobs that can be done with lorries. Um, I think 
reading around and listening to people's opinions, containers seem to be considered one of the easiest jobs. Now containers, you arrive with a skelly and usually you're going to a rail port or a seaport and collecting a box from there or perhaps dropping a box off. And that involves pulling up with your truck, lining your trailer and either the box being lifted off by some mechanism, a machine or, or a vehicle that has a lifting arm or having it placed onto your vehicle. And realistically, the hardest part of that job is making sure that they are locked on or indeed locked off so you it can be lifted. Um, yeah, you've got to, you know, be careful. It's probably slightly more dangerous in the fact that, you know, um, you've got great big containers being lifted over your above head. Um, but again, every site's got its own rules and, and procedures and often they'll say wear a hard hat and things. Um, I'm guessing uh, if a container's being dropped on your head, you, you're done. I'm guessing it's more in kit, you know, while you're walking around and you might bang your head on a, on a container or something. I, 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 you know, it, it seems almost futile to, to have a hard hat thinking it's going to protect you if a container's dropped on your head. It really wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, but anyway, that's the hardest part of your day, getting getting the, con um, the container itself either locked on or locked off your, your trailer, I would have thought. And again, there'll be people out there who will tell me differently. The hard part about container work is possibly sitting around waiting. Um, but again... Um, certainly at ports and things, the, the limited there's there's a limited waiting time unless they're really busy, uh, or it's high winds and they shut the loading and loading. The the delays with container work perhaps is if you are actually doing a live load or unload. And in those cases, you you might have a, f a forty foot um, tray uh, container on the back, or whatever and you've got to wait for it to be physically unloaded. And it might be full of small boxes. And if you can imagine one of those shipping containers being filled with small boxes being hand taken off, because they're not necessarily on pallets, um, so they can't use a forklift or anything to whiz on and off and, and get them that way. Usually goods are just loaded in and packed from floor to ceiling, side to side on, on these containers. So that can be the downside of the job but on the plus side you can sit there watch a film or on Netflix or something or just get a bit of a bit of shut eye um, it's not necessarily taxing work it's just perhaps a bit boring uh, waiting so that's your containers then you've got um, fridge work and often fridge work you've got your fridge unit you've got your box trailer and you will pull up at a destination they will uh, they will unload and unload you. So the hardest part of your day really is maybe doing a trailer swap or opening your doors, getting onto bay, uh, and then you'll hear them whizzing in and out with the forklifts um, to get stuff off. And you, again, usually on pallets um, that they will do that. I believe there's sort of variations again um, with things like milk and stuff. And, and if you're particularly uh, delivering to stores, you may be asked to get things off the back and uh, perhaps put them into the warehouse of the store or something like that. So that may take time um, and certainly more effort. And again, places like Aldi where, you know, you wonder why Aldi is so cheap. But when a lorry driver goes to Aldi to work for them in terms of doing the runs and things, they will be asked maybe to load the truck themselves. So um you know the goods are there for them and they've got to go and then put them onto the truck maybe even sometimes wrap them with the cellophane stuff and all the rest of it to make sure they're secure they then got to when they get to stores unload all that and put it into the store people in the store won't be helping with that very rarely um and then perhaps you've got to then take all the empty pallets and things that they've been in the store back onto the trailer and back to aldi so the driver there is a much more physically demanding job. I would say that's one of the harder jobs to do is these sort of multi-drops at stores because you may end up having to do a lot of the work yourself. So that's probably 
one of the harder parts. The other fridge work side of it though, where they're whizzing back on and off with the forklifts, it's dropping trailers, it's opening doors, it's sitting and waiting a little bit. Um, so relatively straightforward and easy again. So that's, that's generally when you're going uh, from sort of distribution center to distribution center. Um, curtain side work, often general haulage type stuff, um, distribution again, um, again, it can be a variety of goods loaded on and off in a variety of different ways, but often with forklifts, um, sometimes from the side of the vehicle and sometimes from the rear. So again, you may be backing onto bays or you may be pulling up into a yard somewhere, opening your curtains and letting them uh, unload you that way. I think one of the hardest parts of the curtain side work is, is the curtains themselves and also the securing of the load. And there's been lots of posts recently on certainly on TikTok, Instagram, those sorts of things where people have been talking about um, securing loads and being pulled over and being fined for not securing loads appropriately. Uh, and that's partly because there are different styles of curtains, different, um, so you've got internal straps sometimes on, on a lot of these wagons and some of the curtains can withstand certain loads. As a driver, you've got to ensure that these loads don't move um, significantly within in transit and cause, cause a potential hazard or problem for other road users or indeed the driver themselves. So that can probably be a harder part of the job. So curtain side work, yeah, I can see why some people don't like it. Um, but again, it depends on what you're after. I think also the variety of jobs that you can get mean that you can work a six hour day perhaps for a local small company distributing goods. Uh, maybe they've only got one or two runs and they're all fairly local. Uh, or you can have a 12 hour day. And, and often some of these companies that perhaps the smaller companies will sub from will be planning for drivers to, to work for 12 hours. And obviously you've got a nine hour drive time, um, but not planners don't always necessarily factor in traffic, uh, loading, unloading times. They, they look at the miles, they work out roughly how long that'll take and, and kind of plan it that way. So that can lead to overruns in time. It can lead to 12 hour days becoming 13, 14, 15 hour days. It can lead to cancellation of collections or, um, you know, if drivers are sat there for a particularly long time, I've known companies pull the driver back out of a distribution center before they've even unloaded and take the load back to where it came from, only to be obviously delivered later on. Um, just depends how things work. Because again, distribution centers or warehouses or individual stores, they will have their set routines. They will have their set times perhaps for deliveries or collections. And they may have staffing issues themselves uh, and you know they can only work as fast as they can work and if you've got 10 20 um units trucks waiting to be unloaded or loaded and they've only got a limited number of staff it's going to take time sometimes that can be an hour two hours three hours i've known people sitting for five hours at a destination waiting to either get onto a bay or be unloaded and reloaded perhaps as well so I would say the waiting of any type of job is is the frustrating part of driving, particularly. Um, so from my limited experience thus far, um, containers seem to be the easiest of jobs. I would say uh, sort of the fridge work going certainly from distribution center to distribution center is possibly relatively easy also um, and quite quick and then you start going into the curtain side which is perhaps less um, less easy or it's more physically demanding perhaps for certain people but some people like that and then you go to the sort of store deliveries where perhaps you might be unloading the goods into the stores themselves lo reloading the truck um, etc. They're, they're, they're probably certainly a lot more physical 
um, and perhaps, but perhaps you may be doing less driving. So again, if you're getting into the driving side of things because you want to drive, maybe that's something to consider uh, when you're looking for positions. What is it you want to do? What is it you want out of it? Um, and again, the money side of things is a whole different discussion because a job will only pay what it's, what it's going to pay or what people are prepared to work for. And there are people out there who are prepared to work for 10, 11, 12 pound an hour, partly because the system um, dictates that. That if you are a new pass, most companies want two years experience um, for insurance purposes and, and things. So to gain that experience, you've got to do work with agencies or companies that will accept that risk and they're going to pay less and if you can get a cheaper driver doing the same thing why wouldn't you okay because people need to take that those opportunities and, and they accept they're going to be paid less as a new driver so it's it's a catch-22 really but as I say that's a whole different discussion what I would like to know uh, obviously from yourselves is what you consider to be the easiest jobs and why, and perhaps what you consider to be the hardest jobs and why. But also, more importantly, what are the jobs you've enjoyed most or even disliked most? Uh, I haven't touched on things like tippers um, because I, I have no experience of those. I hear bad things about tippers. Um, and again, if you're a tipper, please do sort of comment on, on this because um, there's a reputation should I say for tippers and the reputation is essentially that they they speed around they you know have little care or consideration for others uh, because they've got to get so many loads tipped in a day to to gain wages or bonuses or whatever. I, I genuinely don't know if if this is accurate or not, um, and, and I'm suspecting not. But I also suspect there may be an element or a foundation of truth in the fact that pay is equated to the number of tips you do in a day so I'm sure that can cause people to um, drive in a certain fashion but anyway that's my thoughts it's a bit of a rambling I suppose uh, but please do comment please do like please do subscribe and I will see you again soon for another video take care for now bye bye